Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Kenichi Hop Podcast. I'm Natalie. And I'm Jared. And it's Pride Month. That's right. Yes, happy Pride everybody. We hope you're all having a fun, safe Pride out there. And to celebrate, we wanted to talk about some queer anime or queer anime characters. Queer representation. Queer representation. In, in anime. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, But before we jump into that, we wanted to give some cultural context to how queerness is in Japan. Because, I mean, obviously, just because it's an anime doesn't mean that it's, you know, the same, right? Right. Um, So, um, first to note is that Japan isn't like... So Some Japan super is super liberal yeah, place. Like, yeah. there are still like conservative people in Japan. Yeah. Um, so something that's actually really interesting to note is that Japan is the only G seven country that does not recognize same sex marriage. Yeah, you can get like these certificates of like togetherness or whatever, but you yeah. don't get any benefits of being married. Yes, um, that is to say that. Uh, being in a same-sex relationship is not criminalized. Yeah, it used to be. Yes, it used, it used to, be, to be, but it's not criminalized. But also, you can't marry someone of yeah. the same sex. Um, as you were saying, uh, you can get like certificates, and that also depends on what prefecture you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that people will still probably hold like weddings, but once again, the like official written documents. Um, can't get those right um and then as far as um trans rights go right it's not so good it's not so good it's one of those things where once again on on paper it's like well it's not criminalized yeah it's not criminalized but um to get the the recognition of um of a of a changed gender Mm-hmm. in any sort of official capacity is very hard yes incredibly. so um for example they, there's a lot of hoops to go through um surgery is required like a yeah. certain level of um surgery is required one of which is sterilization um which is a big bad <laughs> yes very bad yes and that is to, that isn't to say um some places here in the united states don't also have like yeah similar laws but um so you have to undergo sterilization you have to be um diagnosed by a doctor as having gender identity disorder so it is treated as it is still treated as like a mental illness um and you have to like go on record and say that you have an identity disorder in order to um get any sort of official markings changed and um also, there's another one. Oh, that you can't have. Um, so there is like age restrictions. Yeah. Obviously, um, but also you can't have underage children in your home, if you want to, um, be officially recognized as, a, the gender that you were not assigned at birth. So yeah. a lot of hoops to jump through, you know. Um, a lot of anti queer sentiments is from western ideology yeah that's kind of how it is all over the world yeah so in a very familiar story um (laughs) back pre-western interaction or western intervention Mm -hmm. with japan so like think like pre even before like edo period like whenever like shintoism was like the main religion in japan like being the the western ideology of male and female and gay relations or like in um same-sex relations Mm -hmm. were seen completely differently like it wasn't necessarily seen as this like forbidden thing yeah yeah so a lot of it still stems from that um and then the last thing that we wanted to kind of touch on was the um the okama yeah so which is like a stereotype kind of yeah, yeah so the term okama is a derogatory one um 
I'm not sure. I don't remember whether they're trying to like reclaim, reclaim it. it. Yeah. But basically what it is is that it's used for typic well, it's used for any gay or effeminate man and it's specifically targeted towards um, trans women. Yeah. And so a lot of the times it's like whenever you see um Okamas represented in like media, it's usually like a very masculine man wearing like a dress and a cheap wig, mm-hmm. and then they have like a five o'clock shadow to be like, yeah. Yes, this is a man that is wanting to be a woman, but he's a yeah. man, yeah, yeah. So, um, that's kind of that's a that's a stereotype, yeah, that is still an anime. Yes, by it the is. way, it's still an anime. Yeah. Um, you mentioned like there's a whole group of them in One Piece. In One yeah, Piece, One Piece has them. Yeah. Um, you could. And the West has even adopted that because I remember in Powerpuff Girls, yeah, there being the trio of, I mean, you could say that they're Okama that are trying to pretend to be, the yeah, the Powerpuff Girls. It's, like so, it's it's something that. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's a it's a view or like a stereotype that's not just in japan they just happen to have a name for it yeah um because i mean you see it in america you see it's just anti-trans imagery yeah um and it sucks yeah it sucks and it does it does still exist yeah and it's definitely like paints a bad picture because like a lot of it's in like kids shows yeah yeah And and like it's a it's a it's a joke you know yeah they're there for like the butt of the joke right yeah it's really unfortunate Okay, but hopping into anime. So I kind of, or we kind of organized this um, chronologically mm-hmm. so you can get an idea of how far back um, queerness or the, I, the ideas of it have been yeah. in anime. And we have traced it back to um, 1967 Princess Knight. Yeah. Which was an anime about a child. Mm-hmm. who was born with a pink and blue heart um, <laughs> and is declared a boy so that uh, they can inherit the throne, right? Yeah. Um, so a pretty clearly intersex kind of story, right, where um, the parents just kind of, like, decide the gender and it's yeah. like, we're going to raise you this way. Yeah, the king... the. <laughs> If I remember correctly, the king wanted a son. Right. And they were like, well, you're well half. this is, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you're close enough. Close you're... enough. I mean, we just like socialize. What if you, I just right? call you a boy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just kind of the, um, it's just a, a story about a, a child that has both the masculine and feminine personalities. Yeah. Um, is like kind of has, is very like feminine in uh, physique, but then presents yeah. masculinely in clothing obviously uh, they are a knight so they have like the sword and like mm-hmm. the you know kind of traditional knight looking clothes yeah definitely like set up for the future set up yes. things for the future yes so from there we jump ahead about a decade to rosa versailles yeah which was in 1979 which was like the same thing pretty much kind of so once again we have oscar um, Oscar is a woman. Mm-hmm. Oscar is born a woman. Um, but she is raised as a boy and is the commander of the Royal Guard in France. So, Rose of Versailles. It's like the French Revolution. Like, yeah. that's like what it's yeah, about. It's, a, it's, yeah. a peri- it's a period piece. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, it's like an actual, not just anime story. Yeah, they, it's like a period drama. Yeah. So, Oscar the Knight. Um, protects Marie Antoinette and there is a lot of tension there right yeah. uh, first of all there's tension with Oscar and her own gender because throughout the anime same thing as with Princess Knight very feminine features mm-hmm. but then very masculine dress I do want to say this though um, she is like the masculine femme though um, because her face is very sharp. Yes, very like, angular. It's like the... Oh, gosh, there was a name for it, but I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, 
this type of like character this yes this kind of type of character design mm. is like okay this is a strong woman right yes um so there's tension with that oscar has with her own gender mm -hmm. and then there's also tension between her and marie antoinette romantic tension yeah um so it's kind of like one of the like obviously we have princess knight as a foundation right yeah the rose of versailles really just shot it forward a whole lot more oh this, definitely the, yeah. um the genre of i guess we can say yuri yeah. which is um woman loving woman content in anime um yeah it's very important in the queer history of anime yeah it like yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, okay next the one that we love maybe the most right now current yeah. obsession rama one half yes rama one half uh, 1987, written by Rumiko Takahashi, just killing it right now. By the way, um, <laughs> well, in this in this time, whenever yeah. she was writing all these wonderful anime. Um, so the premise of Rama One Half is that it is a boy, Rama, who a teenage boy, who goes martial arts training in China at the Forbidden um, Hot Springs. At the Forbidden Hot Springs falls into one of them it's the uh cursed um hot spring of the drowned girl yeah and whenever he touches cold water he turns into a girl whenever he touches hot water again he turns back into a boy um and we kind of ex we explained a little bit in the previous episode just like more detailed plot um yeah. as far as like he was arranged to be married to this girl and she's kind of a tomboy doesn't really like boys like they're just not worth her time kind of thing yeah. um so he meets her at, as a girl as female ranma and they kind of like become for like they they seem to be like liking each other yeah and then yeah and then it's revealed that he's actually a boy and that they're supposed to get married and they're both against it mainly for like independence reasons right mm -hmm. like they're like um you didn't tell me i was supposed to marry her and you didn't tell me i was supposed to marry him and like i should be able to do whatever i want um, but slowly but surely, they do. They are. You say slowly. It was pretty quick Look, that they still realized. They're not together, okay? They're not together, but they pretty quickly realized that they had feelings for each other. They have feelings for I'm each other. I'm talking like doing... less than. In, in the grand scheme of things, it was mm -hmm. like less than 15 episodes. I guess that's true. Like... <laughs> so, like, they have, no one's. The other one of them are admitting again. But yeah. back to the, the, the queer part of this. Mm -hmm. So. For a lot of people, for a lot of trans people that I've spoken to who are into anime, Rama was a turning point for mm -hmm. them. Because, first of all, it would be so easy if it was... I mean, it would be so wonderful if it was that easy, right? Yeah. That's one part of it. Um, but the other part of it is that, although in the beginning of the show, Rama is very against being a girl. Yeah. Rama is like, like, I've had my manhood taken away from me. Like, he's very dramatic about how he does not want to be seen as a girl he's still like he like doesn't want to wear girls clothing whenever he is a girl mm -hmm. like very much so but as the season as the show moves on prog and progresses he becomes very comfortable with it yeah he becomes um he takes advantage he of takes it. advantage of it yeah. he becomes comfortable with it i mean i think literally within the first like two episodes there's a scene where they're eating parfait it's it's way past the second episode. Is it past it? I thought it was oh, really no. early. No, it's way past. Okay, it. whatever. No. There's a scene. <laughs> it's like episode thirty or something like really? that. Really? Oh yeah, my gosh. it really we're, is. We're just breezing through this. <laughs> <laughs> we're on like episode sixty, 60 or seventy. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna finish it. But yeah. there's a basically one of the first instances where he's kind of like maybe this isn't that bad. Yeah, because is he is eating a parfait and he's like, man, I've never had one of these before. And Akane, the girl, the love, the love interest, is like, why not? And he's like, I wouldn't be caught dead eating this if I was a boy. Mm -hmm. It's too girly. It's too girly. Mm -hmm. But, like, he enjoys it. And he, like, as a girl, he takes advantage of, like, the, the flirt, like, you know, getting things his way. And, yeah. like, he thinks of himself as a really cute girl. He thinks he's, like, yes. hot okay. stuff. Okay, that was something that was pointed out the, at the very beginning. Yes. Is that he thinks he is very attractive he as a girl. He thinks he's very attractive More as a attractive girl. than Akane. Than Akane, yes. So, 
I mean, this is... If and, we... okay, I do want to point something out yes. that happened recently, within the past couple episodes. Okay. Is that he literally flirted with boys. Yes. He literally flirted with boys as like, a girl. Like I said, to take advantage of the fact that maybe they would buy him a drink or yeah. an ice cream or a... But yeah. I'm just saying... I mean, no, and then now he's wearing... He's willingly putting on dresses and, yeah. like, you know, like, he's very much accepting the feminine side. Yeah. And, um... It's just, you know, it's like we notice it, like we see it, and it's one of those things where, um, you know, I think just seeing, especially like back in the 80s, Mm -hmm. someone who could comfortably go between the two roles and still like be themselves, you know, because Rama is still Rama. Like, it's not like girl Rama is is a different person from boy Rama. They're the same person still. Right, but they're like, just like a lot more open yeah. with their expression. Like, female Ranma isn't dainty. No, female Ranma's like, not dainty. Yeah. And I would even say that, like, boy Rama is masculine, but he's not like... The, yeah. He's not the most masculine character in the anime. Yeah, definitely. I'll put it that way. Um, he's very light on his feet. He's very flexible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. So... I just think it's really cool. It's a cool anime, it and they is, yeah. and they keep introducing ch- uh, other characters that kind of also challenge the gender norm, um, such as recently there is the Okonomiyaki girl mm-hmm. Ukio, who has a crush on Rama, the boy Rama, right? And they knew each other from childhood, and Ukio um is is a very masculine girl as well yeah she like dresses as a boy as a boy went to an all boys school Mm -hmm. and then was fawned over by a femme boy yeah also in school so there's a lot of like just in general kind of gender play that happens in the anime and it's all in good fun for the most Mm -hmm. part a lot of it is some of it is like oh antics ensue yeah but obviously but it's it's a really good anime. It is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on to the next hard hitter, which is Revolutionary Girl Utna, 1997. Now, this is where the real influence of Rose of Versailles... Yeah. It just expands. It just explodes. So, Utna is honestly a retelling of Rose of Versailles. Like, it's kind of been admitted Yeah. <laughs> that... Um, Rose of Versailles was just such a big influence, right? So, Utna is a girl who wishes to be a prince who saves princesses, right? Already see where this is mm-hmm. going. And she is in high school and she gets into this sword fight. Excuse me. Um, because the, like, student council. Yeah. The student council has this person called the Rose Bride, and this is Anthe. Anthe is like the picture of femininity. Yeah. She is, and she's very passive. She's passive, she's docile. She like doesn't speak, she's just a servant, she's just there to be pretty, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so the student council kind of passes her along, around, and Una is like, that's messed up, and I have to stop that. Yeah. Because I am a prince. Who saves princesses. So Utna gets into a duel over the current owner, quote unquote owner of the Rose Bride, wins the duel, and is like, okay, be free. But Anthe is like, no, I'm your wife now. Yeah. And now Utna has a wife. Yeah, and they sleep in the 69 bed. And they sleep in the 69 bed. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of sapphic, yeah. like, insinuation that happens in Utna a lot um they're very intimate they are very intimate with each other um they do fall for each other genuinely mm-hmm. um Anthe wants to stay with Utna after a while and Utna does have to keep battling for her and that's kind of the, the general premise of the show is that mm-hmm. Utna, Utna keeps battling for Anthe um and she pulls a sword out of Anthe's cities that's also really important um but it was, I mean, it's just so obviously, so 
candidly a sapphic story. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, yes, these are two women and they want to be together. Yeah. Like, for sure. And then a bunch of other really weird things happen, but... Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I mean, it definitely goes with the whole, like, uh, defining gender and things mm-hmm. like that of, like, okay, well, she's a prince. She wears the male uniform, the male uniform even though yeah. it is an altered male uniform yes. with, like, short shorts. With short shorts, yeah. Um, but it is still the male uniform nonetheless. Mm-hmm. And she's the prince. She fights other men and women because there's also other yes. lesbians. Yes, there is at least one other mm-hmm. sword lesbian. <laughs> um, and we, we talked about this in our anime class. Mm-hmm. And um, I think one thing that it kind of pointed out um, or one thing that we kind of pointed out there is that like gender as a whole is very deconstructed in it um, yes because like not only are the females like trying to get out of their gender molds like Anthe the whole Anthe's whole story is that she's becoming no longer docile yes she's you know getting out of the female stereotype yeah the passivity yeah yeah but the men in it are also like kind of forced to duel like it's yes. their like r- like duty to do it and like right. i mean near the end um when end of the world is introduced mm-hmm. he kind of like puts these men into a docile um, situations as well whenever right. he takes over right. and yeah. like with his car scenes and <laughs> yeah, yeah the anime the, gets really weird yeah yeah but it it does do a lot of exploration of um, gender norms yeah. gender performances mm-hmm. um, it's it's good yeah, it's because, weird I mean even <laughs> I mean even Utna um, she if I remember correctly, she falls for end of the world, um, but kind of snaps out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's even putting that, oh, I'm so strong, but I'm still delicate. Yeah. You know, it's good. It's yeah, really good. It's good. It's weird, but it's good. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving forward to another hard hitter. 2006, we got Oran High School Host Club. Mm-hmm. We've talked about this in... In depth. depth. <laughs> so, if you are interested in an in depth explanation of what makes Orange High School Host Club so wonderful, so campy, so gay, um, you can check out our camp in anime episode, which mm-hmm. is pretty much just solely about Orange High School Host Club. Pretty much, yeah. And I just go through, well, both go through what camp is and how Orange High School Host Club did it so well, so perfectly. Um, but this is to say, that, um, if you don't know, Oran High School is a uh, female student, Haruhi, who is, like, not very feminine, right? Yeah. Uh, not very feminine, doesn't present femininely, um, femininity, has short hair, uh, stumbled into the host club, breaks, which are, like, a bunch of, like, frivolous, frivolous, uh, rich boys, right? Um, and she accidentally breaks something that was worth 8 million yen. Something like something that, Something, yeah. a ridiculous high amount of yen. And says that she will work it off by working in the host club alongside the boys. Um, and then slowly through the episode, through the first episode, they come to the realization that she is a girl, but she is still going to continue, um, working as a boy, as a host. So, like flirting with girls like that's like yeah. a job right yeah <laughs> um some of the hosts are okay with it some of them are not uh, and then that's like the little gender antics yeah so haruhi is like i don't care how you see me i never cared to begin with like yeah. you know um and also i don't mind being fond over by girls so um very much an icon mm-hmm. <laughs> and I mean, other than that, there is some, like, there is some other, like, gender tension um, with within the host club as a whole. 
because there's that whole episode where they all dress up as girls to try and make her he feel yeah. better so there's a just it's a very flamboyant and campy show yeah yes it's very good everybody should watch it more in high school okay next princess jellyfish now i would say that this one maybe isn't as well known Probably as the not. others i don't think so right so princess jellyfish 2010 okay it is about a bunch of female otakus who are all roommates they're all very awkward and they all have their thing right because they're obsessions mm-hmm. um the main character's obsession is jellyfish she likes to look at jellyfish she goes to the aquarium draws jellyfish it's her thing um one day a trendy confident woman enters their life um to, it was to help the the main character like save a jellyfish but then like she just kind of keeps coming back right yeah. to like check up on them because she's so cool um but it is revealed that this woman is a man is a cross dresser and that's that yeah <laughs> essentially um there there isn't any men allowed in the apartment complex that is a roommate rule so the main character does keep it a secret that she's been inviting a man into the house because they all like they all like this this guy um because she's so cool right yeah but obviously they're they're awkward they don't want to talk to men yeah um so this was probably like my first like explicitly queer show yeah that i saw like there's like some like like with oron that's like it's pretty explicit but on like a Mm low-key kind of way Mm -hmm. and like and then like um then some other shows may have like queer characters but this is like in your face like yes this is a man who is presenting as a woman yes and like it's not the joke yes like he's being serious yeah um so whenever i was introduced to this anime or told about this anime way back when i was introduced to it as this man is a drag queen essentially Mm -hmm. a drag uh entertainer and that he is helping these i mean because he does he helps these young women find their confidence yeah. right like just be more confident mean be a little bit more sociable etc um but that is not necessarily the case it's not really um wouldn't call wouldn't call him a yeah. queen is literally just a guy who dresses as a woman and you told me because i forgot this i haven't seen the anime in a hot second yeah um that he's actually like a player yeah like like yeah. straight does some questionable things to men questionable um, things to men questionable gets with a lot of women gets with a lot of women he's a player yeah because he's also attractive as a man yeah so there's also that mm-hmm. but princess jellyfish something that we need to rewatch yeah and i think okay so i think that this is something to point out that like he's straight yeah and i think that's an interesting take Mm -hmm. that's an interesting thing to do yeah like to make a cross dresser straight because they're like um because he eventually like falls in love with the main character yes who is a girl who is a girl right and i don't know i almost think that the love plot is kind of unnecessary it is yeah yeah it felt it feels kind of like a like a cheap way to advance the plot um yeah. i was actually reading um that whenever the writer was initially like writing out the show mm-hmm. um the the cross dresser mm-hmm. um i don't remember what their name is um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> and um it was actually originally going to be a woman they like, um, weren't going to be like a crossdresser, a crossdresser yeah. yeah. Which is interesting mm-hmm. because I wonder if they would have kept the the love the plot. love and the love plot. I don't know. 
Guess we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two more. Sorry. Okay. We got two more. Okay. So the next one is uh, Yuri on Ice 2016. Mm-hmm. Yuri on Ice took everybody, had it had their throats, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember because I was a freshman in college and I had my throat. <laughs> and um, what is, so Yuri on Ice, if you don't know, Yuri, main character, is a figure skater. And he's kind of like, hasn't been doing that great. He has some confident issues, honestly. So this is kind of a weird thing because he's he's pudgy. That's like actually part of the plot mm-hmm. is that he was like a quote unquote fat kid. I don't want to say that he was like fat though because yeah, he wasn't like, I don't know. But he does have, so he has body image issues, I guess is the best way to put it. He has a lot of self-confidence issues. He loves to skate, but he, he like gets in his own head and like that kind of stuff, right? And then we have Victor, who is a professional figure skater who decides to mentor Yuri. And they have very strong romantic tension throughout the whole thing. Um, This is like canon that they are together. Mm -hmm. Um, They did a lot of work to kind of censor it, to kind of move around it in the anime, such as the famous kiss where victor runs out onto the ice and like leaps into yuri's arms and everyone is like was that a kiss and the writers were like yes it was like they were like yes it was but we just didn't we censored it we didn't actually like animate it yeah um and they also like buy rings together like it's very canon but they don't it's not I don't want to say it's not explicit because yeah. I'm like you have to it's not like said yes like you have to know that this is explicit like because it's they make it so obvious mm-hmm. but um, I really like Jiri on Ice I'm going to make you watch Jiri on Ice mm-hmm. it's really good you guys should watch it too it's very pretty mm-hmm. uh, okay and then the last one our most recent one um, Sars on Mai yeah so Sars on Mai came out in 2021 Mm-hmm. It is one of my favorite animes ever. So it's just like Utan, <laughs> but with boys. Yeah. And these. It's the same director? I think it's it's one of the people who worked on Utan. Yeah. It made Sars on Mai. And it's so wonderfully campy and gay. Mm-hmm. So one of the characters in Sars on Mai is explicitly gay because he's like, I kissed you while you were sleeping. Like yeah <laughs> like like kind of a cringe gay right mm-hmm. but we all like except like he still like has a crush on the other main character but we it's almost like they're like okay well this is just our life now yeah um with you being in love with me and me being not whatever and then the other main character is also a cross dresser um he said he did it for his little brother yeah but honestly sometimes he'll just like put it on to like get around something you know Mm -hmm. like whenever they had the couple's day oh yeah at the um at the fair he was like i guess i'll be a girl and then just like put on the wig and outfit and he like acts it out like he's totally comfortable Mm -hmm. but like i guess not gay i don't know yeah questionable if you ask me um the cops in it are gay definitely yeah Canonically, they raised a child together. Um, and if you are a fan of Sarazama and have not read that manga, that little spinoff manga, definitely do. Because it is adorable. <laughs> so cute. They're just a couple of guys raising a child. Um, and it's great. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. I love it. So you said last, but there is one more thing that I thought of. Okay. That is definitely a must for a even more recent, because it's currently airing, Mm -hmm. which is um, Mobile Suit Gundam Witch for Mercury. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That is also just Utena. Um, (laughs) Like, Rosa Versailles was incredibly influential, and so much that it made Utena incredibly influential. Even more influential, Um, yes. So... It is literally the exact same. For the first, like, season, it is literally the exact same plot as <laughs> Utena, where main char- they are at a high school. The main character um, is a girl, or the two, two main characters. One of them is a girl who's a transfer student, or just transferred in, um, who is tall, 
Um, and another girl who is a bride in this sort of bride game, mm-hmm. wedding mm-hmm. game. And so she defeats the husband in the f- or the groom in the very first episode and then becomes the the br- the groom right. and to the bride. Right. And it's like the thing that I love about it is that like she like questions it at first but then is completely like okay let's plan the rest of our life together nice like yeah she is like i made a promise to murine that i will not lose and we will like stay together and we're gonna <laughs> go on dates together Aww. and like it's just so cute and um things get rocky and um and she's just trying to stay positive and uh the thing that's kind of funny though is that um the roles are kind of reversed so um uh oh my gosh why can't i remember her name um the 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 prince okay the the groom um she's like not confident at all (laughs) she will literally stand behind the bride and be like (laughs) you get her (laughs) you get him (laughs) like like because the bride is incredibly confident Mm -hmm. like she's a very strong and independent and is like yeah let me yeah i got (laughs) this and so season two is airing right now and it's kind of past the whole groom and bride thing Mm -hmm. and uh is gotten into more of a war is bad typical gundam Gundam stuff yeah yeah just wanted to point that out just wanted to mention that all right now we have to talk a little bit about the bad yes we have to talk a little bit about the bad because not everything can be perfect yeah basically everything that we've talked about so far is good is good yeah it's good enough at least yeah you know it's entertainment yeah um nothing terribly offensive Mm -hmm. now this stuff though it's just offensive pretty much so so um if you would like to hey watch these these is go for it yeah um the first one we have is bloom into you i should mention that i have not seen any of these i've seen all of them unfortunately unfortunate um so all i have written down here is emotional manipulation yeah so it's a weird (laughs) bloom into you is really weird because there's two girls and one of them is like the student council president and the other one's uh like transfer student i think Mm -hmm. and so like the the transfer student is like oh I have no emotion. I don't feel love. And then, but the student council president is like tall and has long black hair and is like, oh, you're so pretty. Like, let's be in a relationship. And then I think they do. And, but like the transfer student is like almost like ring her along. Mm -hmm. Like, because she's like, I don't feel anything towards you. Yeah like it's a it's really weird like not reciprocated yeah it's like completely not reciprocated at all mm-hmm. um i think maybe it does at the end but like through this whole thing she's like i don't know if we i like she's like i don't feel the same I, way. yeah 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 so it's pretty garbage yes. um but i watched it all <laughs> uh, I think I might have watched it when it was airing, now that I think about it. But, yeah. yeah. So, this next one. Now, this one is the only one that I have even heard of. It was Citrus. Yes, Infamous. Because everybody hates Citrus. Everyone hates Citrus. Everyone I hates also Citrus. Watched the, yeah. I also watched this one when it was airing. Yes. And it all we was... got All we have to say, Stepsisters. 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 Yeah. Mm. So. Ugh. But... It's, uh, yeah, so it's they're, <laughs> they're stepsisters that are in lesbians with each other. Yes. And they have opposite vibes. Like, they share a room. I actually think they might share a bed. Oh, no. And, okay. Um, no, I don't, I don't remember. Regardless, one side of the room's all girly. The other side is, like, monochrome. And, like, 
They're stepsisters. They're stepsisters. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, we have Sakura Trick. This is like a, like, what's the opposite of an honorable mention? Like a dishonorable mention. A terrible mention. <laughs> this is a, a... Dishonorable mention. Yeah, dishonorable mention. <laughs> this show has no plot. Um, like, the whole point of the show is to watch animated high school girls make out. Like, and it's not like, so every single episode they have a makeout session. Mm -hmm. And it's not short. Like, it just goes on and on multiple times an episode. And like, they definitely do have the conversation of like, we shouldn't be doing this. But then they keep doing it. Right. Because they do have the, like, is it okay for a girl and a girl to kiss each other? I don't know. It feels right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they're, yeah. And so, like, also I think that there's one girl that's, like, really pushy about it. And the other girl's not so pushy about it. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, uh, this is a little uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah, literally every single episode is, like, a three-minute makeout session. Like... It is so garbage. All right, so that's just a couple of bad ones. Yeah, we had to, we had to mention them. Um, the next thing I wanted to move into was just some like honorable mention gay characters. Yeah. So these are characters that um, they're they're the internet that they're in. It's not really a. It's not a gay show. It's not a gay show. It's these characters just happen to be queer in some way. Yeah, and it's not and it's not really like super central to the the grand plot yeah. of the show um so in no particular order <laughs> um we have good old sailor moon cousins yeah they're cousins they're cousins uh, <laughs> neptune and uranus where um infam- infamously they um whenever it, sailor moon was brought to the u.s they were translated and dubbed as cousins and not as lovers which they are which is very very funny Yes. Like, what an American thing to do. Yeah. So... Because none of the dialogue has changed. Like, none of the... They're still very much in love. Like, none of the actions are changed. They still, like, hold hands and shit. Yes. So they are infamous. Yeah. Infamous. Um, then we have um, Kaoru, Neon Genesis, Evangelion. Yeah. Literally just there to be gay. Exactly. And to yeah. make Shinji go, maybe I like men. Mm-hmm. Um, if you watch the series he's literally just there for one episode and that's yeah. it um next we have grell from black butler mm-hmm. now i know this one is it's a it's a weird one because and i will say that i also f- fell victim to this whenever i was in middle school but once again in the english dubbing and in the english translation grell is presented as a just a flamboyant man yes yeah he is presented, or she, she is presented as a flamboyant man, but in actuality is a trans woman, yeah. canonically trans woman. Now, I love Grell. Mm-hmm. I love Grell in the anime, and I think she's fabulous, but I do, I definitely did not know better yeah. <laughs> as a, as a child. And, yeah. um, so. Same. Yeah. So, but it, still a very iconic trans character in anime mm-hmm. um next a little bit we're getting a little bit newer now um longa in skate the mm-hmm. infinity first of all skate the infinity is very queer coded it is yeah. um just like several characters are but longa is pretty explicitly like my heart flutters when i'm near him yeah. like yeah you know i just like to be around him um but adam is also pretty adam is incredibly adam is yeah. like a fire gay like yeah well the thing is that <laughs> i need the, to i need to dance with you yeah i was gonna say the problem is that with adam is that he's like literally like the predatory he's a predator, yeah. of gay adult towards yeah. these kids yeah it's, yeah that's not good yeah um okay you said lily in zombieland yeah saga. so lily in zombieland saga is um is trans Mm-hmm. So whenever, um, so whenever she was alive, she was born a boy, mm-hmm. um, and then she did like, um, 
she did like commercials and acting as a child actress Mm -hmm. as a girl Mm -hmm. and then um whenever she died um well she died a girl right and so uh whenever she was brought back to life everyone was just like oh this is a girl and it actually wasn't until like she had you know every episode every character has their backstory episode Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like so she had her whole backstory episode of being a boy but it's never mentioned other than in that episode Mm, and so it's like handled really well of like yes this is a this is a female yeah yeah um and then lastly in kind of a little modern run was ryuji in blue period Mm -hmm. um i adore ryuji i really do i feel for them i really Mm -hmm. do and honestly they're um they're like as far as how they see themselves it's kind of back and forth because um first of all they are they dress in kind of a hybrid way yeah they wear both the male uniform female uniform um they have long hair they um in their casual wear they they dress more feminine Mm -hmm. right but also they know they like they've called themselves just a cross dresser before yeah but they also very much are attracted to men so as far as how they see themselves it seems pretty open for interpretation if you want to however you want to see it but i Mm -hmm. adore them i think they're a wonderful character i'm always rooting for them Mm -hmm. um in a non-serious anime um in um Comey can't communicate right I was actually thinking about her yeah um Najimi oh yeah um, Najimi is is a gender questionable yes. character literally, they never it's actually a, it's literally a joke yeah that they just put a question mark next yeah to them, they never like... confirm what gender that character is she's female presenting yeah um but will be like, yeah, I'm a boy. Yeah. And, so. like, the friend, then the main character is like, weren't you a guy? Like, yeah. like also, but then it's, like, willing to just be ignorant, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe I misremembered it. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And, like, she'll, like, follow, like, the girls to, like, Locker the girls' room. sleepover. Yeah. And they're like, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. And she's like, what? She's like, what? 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 Like, yeah. she's very, like, are you going to say something about it? Yeah. And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah. So it's in this in-between of, like, a joke, but not, like, a bad joke. She's in on the joke. Yeah. She's in on the joke. She yeah. knows that. She knows that. Yeah. She knows. Um, okay. And then lastly, we've kind of already yelled about it, but we're going to yell about it some more. And that is in Heavenly Delusion. Yes. Yes. Heavenly Delusion. So in Heavenly Delusion, it was revealed... In, like, the third episode? The third episode. In the third episode. Well, end of the second episode. End of the second episode, went into it in the third episode, that Kuroko, the one of the main characters in Heavenly Delusion, who is a girl, is who, actually a boy. Yes. Who had his brain put into a girl's body. Yes. And we hate it. Absolutely it's awful. awful. So, um, we talked about it a little bit in the... Um, what's in season episode yeah. because at that at that point we had just kind of gotten to that point where yeah. that was revealed and as it's gone on it just it's still not good <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much it's still not good because it's very inconsistent mm-hmm. it's um it's just it's gross i don't know it's like it is really gross and it's like the way that it's handled is just really weird and um like because if the guy, if the the boy that's supposed to be in her body is like her, her brother. Okay, it's a weird thing because <laughs> so the boy in her body is her like stepbrother, orphan brother. Yeah, younger brother. Um, but he also loves her romantically. Yes. And so like, it's this weird like, like, I. I am disconnected from this body, but I still want this body to be recognized as, 
like beautiful, a beautiful feet, body, a beautiful yeah. woman. Because I love this woman. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. Because th- then what you get, first of all, because he is disconnected from his body, like mm-hmm. in his in his own mind. Um, we do have we do have kind of the classic like I'm naked in front of a, I'm naked and I don't really think anything of it. Yeah, kind of thing. Um. Which the other main character, the one that she's traveling with, is attracted to her. Yeah. Um, so that's like awkward. That's a, you know, a joke. But then we also have like, like, her asking, "Hey, like, do you still see me as a woman? Because I'll let you touch my boob." <laughs> yeah. Ah, and that's so weird. Yeah. That's so weird, and. But then later, they're like, the main boy has to dress up as a woman, Mm -hmm. and the guy that they're with is like, wow, you look really cute as a girl. But then she's like, wait, but who looks more beautiful, me or her? Or Or me or him? Yeah. And then she's like, well, you, because you're actually a girl. And he's like, tee hee hee. Yeah, it's a really weird thing. And then there's also like, it's weird, man. It's weird because I, like I said, I talked about it in the "What's in Season" episode, but it just kind of seems like a way to sidestep um, the trans. Yeah. A tra- having a trans character, um, it is only maybe plot relevant. We haven't gotten to the real plot relevant part yeah. yet. Well, it's plot. It's plot relevant because. Because him being in his sister's body, like is he wants the plot. <laughs> yeah, well, he wants to find who did that to them. Yeah. So like that's he's searching for the the doctor who did that to yeah. them. So that is that does make it plot relevant. But like, couldn't pick anything else. Really. Honestly, they don't need that plot. Yeah, they, they don't just kind need of, that. They plot. don't need it because they already have another reason that they're just kind of wandering around, and yeah. it's to get this to other guy to heaven. Yeah. So. Um, I give it an uncomfortable out of 10. Yeah, I give it a bad out of 10. It's pretty bad. It's, like I said, it just seems like a really weird way to, like, say that you have a trans character, but then also be like, but they're not trans. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't agree with the body that they're in, but they don't, like, hate the body that they're in because yeah. it's their, sis- their sister that they love, but... It's really, it's really weird and unnecessary. Yeah. And I think that is all. Yep. Obviously, there is more out there. Plenty. There are more characters out there, more animes out there um, that are good, that are bad. But these are the ones that we wanted to talk to, to you guys or with you guys about. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. I'm Natalie. And I'm Jared. And thank you guys so much for listening. Yeehaw. Yeehaw.